Hey guys, welcome to the new Living Clean Kitchen. It's time to get started. I'm so excited for this first recipe. It's been a while since I've cooked for you guys, so I'm so excited, I can't wait. All right, so this week's recipe is dessert. If you follow me on social media, you saw the pre-bake. Now, if I haven't made a recipe in a while, before I do an actual recording of it, I will make it and make it the way that I know how to make it, my recipe, just to make sure I haven't forgotten something, make sure that what I used to make still applies, get all the measurements down, because many of you know, when I cook, I do the little of this, little of that method. In this case, we're baking. So if you see my shoulders come up and I'm like, oh my God, it's because we're baking. And um, baking is not necessarily my forte. I have received a lot of tips from my, my chef partners out there, which I love, thank you guys so much. Um, and we're gonna do this. I haven't had an issue where I've burnt anything like this recently, so fingers crossed. All right, so let's get into this. So here's a couple of different things about black bean brownies that you may not know. One, you can play with some of the ingredients. You can actually make it healthier or more of a treat. You can go two different ways. We're gonna kind of come to a middle ground today uh, because you and I live in reality. So because we live in reality, we're gonna come to a middle ground. Now once we get to a couple of the little add-ons like our, our meal replacement protein powder here, um, the greens, things like that, we'll chat about how to make that a healthier version versus the dessert, right? Versus the treat. Because you're gonna have healthier treats that you can eat every single day, every single meal. And then you have your treats, which are made exactly the way dessert should be made without any consideration for calorie count, sugar, what have you. They are there to have fun, to enjoy. They are not designed for you to eat every single day. So you've got some options here. That's a fun part about brownie, black bean brownies. On top of that, black bean brownies are more fudgy. So if you're a chocolate fanatic, you like fudge, this is the recipe for you. All right, so let's get into it. Really, all you need, your preheated oven, which is making noise because of my leftover pasta. We're gonna push my lunch over there. And food processor. That's everything you need. So let's put the food processor right here where you can see what's happening. And let's get into it. So we need three quarters cup of cooked black beans. Now, because I'm such a wonderful cook and have what I did was I packed some things in the long-term storage which was only supposed to be three months and turned into much longer and then I packed other things inside the for the apartment that we were temporarily in um, so <laughs> I haven't found all my stuff yet so we're looking at three quarters cup cooked black beans so what I use is canned black beans drained which is why it's sitting in this I drain them because ultimately they're cooked. What you're looking for is softened black beans. You do not want dry beans because they will not grind up very well and they won't puree. You want them soft. So this is a half cup scoop. So we're gonna we're gonna do a half cup scoop and then half the half cup scoop. Make sense? <laughs> All right. Because as much as I would like to say that a can is three quarters of a cup. It's not, it's, it's closer to a full cup. So there's our three quarter cup black beans. I'm gonna leave that in there because I don't wanna put it on the counter. All right, now half cup vegetable oil or olive oil. Hold on, I need my liquid measuring cup because one thing I have discovered is if you use these for liquid servings, it doesn't work out the same. When I was growing up, I thought that this was the same as this. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. So anyway, all right, so half cup vegetable oil. I actually specifically bought vegetable oil 
for this recipe because I don't usually have it in the house. I'll do avocado oil, I'll do just about anything, but this is one of those recipes that straight up vegetable oil, you want the straight up vegetable oil. Not the olive oil, not the avocado, not the grapeseed, you want the straight up vegetable oil, you're baking. All right, next is your two eggs. Oh, it's ready. Boop, 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 boop. All right, so here's the deal with the eggs, you guys. I am using real eggs. However, if you are vegan, the way you, you modify this is you use chia eggs or flaxseed eggs. And you use the recipe that would equate to two full eggs. I don't really know, I know it's like a two to one. Don't know off the top of my head which one it is, but we'll get there. Now, if anybody ever watched Emerald, um, who else? Oh, um, Alton Brown, anybody like that on the Food Channel, they will tell you, you never crack your egg in here, you always crack it in here. Now, I am guilty of cracking in there. I have gotten a batch of eggs that I normally always buy, and for some reason the, the shells are cracking like you would not believe, so we're gonna crack it in here. Just to make sure we don't end up with shells in our brownies, because that is just disgusting. And yes, I know we can eat shells, I don't wanna eat shells. Okay. Eggs. Um, get a little spork. I feel weird putting it right into the food processor. I know I can, but I feel a little weird because I've always been told that you mix up your eggs and you whip it a little bit and then you put your eggs in. And in this recipe, you really don't need to, but you know, like I said, I feel weird, so we're gonna do that. All right. And I have my recipe down here so I don't screw anything up because I want to make sure that you guys get the right recipe. All right, so Hershey's. I am an East Coast girl. Hershey's. All right, now what I need is a third cup of the cocoa powder, two thirds cup of sugar, and coffee or espresso. Those are our next couple of ingredients. So give me just one sec, I'm gonna get a spoon so we can put the cocoa in without spilling it all over the freaking place. All right. And I'm spilling it anyway. You know, that's probably why they have rags. All right. So, put a little bit more in there. Okay. Third cup, going in, there's our chocolate. Now, two thirds cup sugar. You can also opt modify this, however, it does modify the texture of your brownies, okay? You, instead of sugar, you could use date sugar, coconut sugar, which would end up very similar. I'm using just straight plain old sugar. Um, you can also use dates. You could just take 10 dates and drop those suckers in there. It's gonna make your recipe fudgier. I don't know the, the word for that. You're gonna definitely have some fudge on your hands, that's for sure. All right, so there's our two thirds cup of sugar. And that, that's kind of where, you know, we're talking about dessert versus healthy. The healthier version of it is going to be the dates, the monk sugar, um, monk fruit, date syrup, things like that. So you can sweeten it in a variety of different ways. If you choose to do dates, 10 dates, puree them up inside, just drop them in your food processor. Um, if you choose to do syrup, it's two tablespoons, okay? Very simple. All right, espresso or coffee? I could not find espresso. Truth be told, instant espresso actually works really well with chocolate really well, especially with black beans, because what you're trying to do here is you're trying to really let that chocolate flavor pop out so that when you're eating these, you don't taste the black beans, you taste chocolate. Your brain tastes chocolate, and from that point, your brain's going to play games with itself and say, I'm eating brownies. That's why it tastes like that, okay? All right, so 
We only want a teaspoon. I never know how much is in here. I think this is a teaspoon, but we're baking. So <laughs> unlike cooking, we're not gonna change it. So let's put our instant coffee. Teaspoon, come on. All right, there we go. Yep, it's half a packet. Half a packet. All right, so if you double up the recipe, just drop the whole, the whole packet in. All right, so from there, we need a teaspoon of vanilla extract. This is actually one of my favorites, the Simply Organic. The flavor, especially, I get the Madagascar vanilla. Oh, it tastes so good, you guys. It is definitely my favorite of all the extracts. All right, so we got our vanilla extract in there. The vanilla extract is going to allow us to really, really taste that chocolate. Okay, it's gonna give it a base so that the chocolate can just go boop and right in our face. Okay, so now flour. Here's the thing with flour. I typically use a gluten-free flour. Now, for this recipe, I chose garbanzo beans. You know why? Because garbanzo bean flour basically means there is protein in here. Now, if we look at the back, there's seven grams of protein per quarter cup. We need a third cup. So, a little over nine grams of protein for that. All right, so we need a third cup of flour We've used this for our chocolate, so we're going to use it for our flour. Okay, tap it out. Regular flour, especially the unbleached, really is just flour. There's no nutritional value to it. So when you can add a flour that does have some nutritional value to it, you really boost the nutritional value of your food. And you lower, a lot of times, the glycemic index, depending on what you're putting in it, right? Because you're creating balanced macros. That's what you're looking for in any of the meals that you prepare is balanced macros. All right, now, half teaspoon baking powder, half teaspoon salt. Now, this is where I just, you know, there's your half teaspoon, and that's full teaspoon, there we go, half teaspoon. Tablespoon, what am I doing? And this, you guys, is why I learned to cook, not bake, because if I don't stop and really pay attention, who is a mistake for me? Mm-mm-mm. All right, so now we've got all of our actual ingredients in here. So here's how we bump up the nutritional value of a smidge. We take our greens, okay? Now, nutritional greens like this, this one in particular, one big tablespoon, which serving tablespoon like this is three cups of greens. A traditional tablespoon, this teaspoon comes up. Traditional tablespoon is one and a half to two cups. So that's what we want. We're gonna add two of, two of these in because I realized the other day, I don't know if y'all noticed in the pictures, um, the, the first picture I posted, Instagram put a really cool filter on it so I can get modified the color a little bit. But the second where I was eating it for lunch or for breakfast, um, because the powder is green, like, see? Um, look. I don't know if you can see it. I'll take a picture. Um, but because the powder is green, the brownies turned it up, turned out kind of green. They had a green tinge to them. All right, so now what happens if we want to bump this up a little bit, add a little bit more protein. Now you've got protein in here from the flour, you've got protein in here from the black beans. But what if you want to bump it up just slightly? That's where this comes in. Now you can use, oops, you can use either vanilla or chocolate. Either one works, okay? I'm using chocolate because, um, why not? And then what I do, so each scoop of this will give you 
let's see, 28 grams of protein. And this recipe makes eight servings, okay? So, I'm only gonna put one scoop. I want it to blend well. I don't really wanna overdo it. We've got a couple other protein sources in there. You don't need to overload it with protein powder. It's just an extra little oomph. All right, ready? Last up. Uh, let's see. Go with low. So what you do is you want it to blend. See how it's blended really well? This upper part is just, you know, everything we put in there, but see how it's blended really well. Everything is a consistent color and it's consistent all the way around. At this point, you want to take the top off and look to see what the texture and the density of your brownie mix is, okay? Now, I've got some chunks in here of black beans. There's some powder still in here. Um, one of the things that I'm specifically worried about, one of the things you want to pay attention to, is the actual consistency of the dough. Okay? So, you know how brownie dough usually is, right? Well, if you look, see how thick that is? Okay, that's too thick, which explains why I'm seeing so much density within here. So what we want to do is add something to it, right? Usually a quarter cup of liquid helps, so any sort of plant-based um, milk works. We're gonna scrape this back in. Let's get another one of these because I don't wanna lose any bit of my brownies here. All right, so I'm gonna get some of my oat milk. Now I make my own oat milk at this point. There are four of us drinking oat milk, so that eh, gets expensive. Boys drink it for their bottles. Um, Brian drinks it for his smoothie. I use it for my coffee and for recipes like this. So give me just one sec. really good um, tasty much cheaper on the budget all right so it's a quarter cup right so here's what we're gonna do we are going to this here lock it in place right that you put in could take more all right so I am gonna get my dishes and we are gonna bake our brownies ready we need to put this here so that we have it straight now I will tell you this I have a bigger version of these and one of the things that I realized is it almost made it too thick, so I'm using two smaller versions. So the cook time is going to be a little bit different. Usually you're cooking it about 15, 20 minutes. 
not very much. You want to check it um, because when I cooked the first batch this weekend, it actually was closer to 30 minutes. Um, specifically because it just didn't cook well. We're, you know, new kitchen, new oven. You know how that goes. So we have our plate here. All right. Let me do one thing really quick because this chocolate on the counter is driving me crazy and I feel like I'm going to about to sit in it. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. Now, what do we need to do first? Grease down our pans, right? So, let's grease down these pans. And I'm gonna lower this, you're not gonna really see my face, but I want you to see what I'm doing with the pans. Because ultimately, the food is heat. All right, so what I usually do is I take a paper towel, We use vegetable oil inside the recipe, so I'm gonna use vegetable oil, okay? Now you notice I haven't pulled out the chocolate chips, right? That is coming, trust me, that's coming. All right, so we put in this. Now, what you wanna do with these, they really don't poof up much, so however thick you prefer your brownies, that's how thick you want to pour the dough in, all right? So, let's start over here. Let's see. I like the cake-like brownies. I love the fudgy ones, but I really do prefer the cake-like. So, all right. We got just a little, little edge there. Let's see about this one. Actually, that might work out really well. All right, now. You know the saying, don't let anything go to waste, right? All right, so this gives us some space to scrape down the, the insides, really get all that chocolate and deliciousness into our pans. We're gonna pop this in. I'm gonna stop the video and we will come back later, okay? Come back in about 20 minutes and I will show you the outcome. All right. And the best thing about the food processor and the reason you're using a food processor, not a blender, is because you don't want puree. You want the black beans mashed up, pureed in, but not like a smoothie. And a blender, well, you could do this in a blender very, very carefully, a blender will make it too liquidy. So, all right, so let's see if my husband and I will get our end pieces, huh? Okay, so now that we've done that, now what we need to do is put our chocolate chips in. So, typically you want a quarter cup to a half cup of chocolate chips, okay? Here's how I do my chocolate chips. That's probably why it was all fudgy the other night. A little extra, good measure. All right, and then you take this same, the same one you scraped in with, and just mix it. Okay, mix them into this pan. You could mix it in the food processor, but I found that what ends up happening is they get all chopped up with the blades and it's just a pain in the butt. So I usually just put it in this way. Now you can also add some nuts to this. If you like nuts in it, you can put some peanut butter in this. Um, that's another healthy option. 
So if you've seen any of the boxes on the shelves in the baking aisle, if you go and you look, they have peanut butter swirl, swirls, they have caramel swirls, you can make a turtle, you can make a s'mores. Same concept, you guys, same concept. Black bean brownies. I'm gonna pop these in the oven and we'll be right back. Fresh out of the oven, you guys, check it out. All right, so as you can see, the center here is pretty dark. So what's gonna happen is they are 90% cooked. If you kind of tap on it, you can't see a fingerprint, but what you can see through these cracks right up in here is that it is more cake-like and well, it does taste fudgier than a normal brownie. You are gonna get that cake-like texture on the top and that's kind of how you know it's done. You will see it actually wobbles just like regular cake mix does. Um, I have not had any luck doing a toothpick test or a knife inside the middle because they're black beans, it's soft, it's fudgy. It's always gonna come out with something. So, brownies are done. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Now it's time to let them cool, let them settle, get them fully, fully cooked, just like any baked goods. When you pull them out, they continue to cook. So. These will actually have to settle for about half an hour. Once you let them sit for half an hour, they are delicious, ready to go. Um, so I'll see you in half an hour. Brownies are done, they're cooling. We should really put something on top of it. And I was thinking while they were baking that, you know, maybe that little peanut butter idea I suggested would be a good one. So we're gonna get our glass baking bowl over here. Put it on top. Let's make sure we turn on. There it is. Let's turn this on so we can get the water boiling. And I'm going to move my brownies because I want to make sure that they cool but aren't still cooking. Not, not under that flame, at least. All right, so here's our glass cooking bowl. This is what you are shooting to do with this is create a double boiler. So, if you have a double boil double boiler at home, this is where you would use it. All right, this comes in here, right? Yeah, wrapped over chocolate chips. Now the whole thing with ganache is it's basically chocolate with milk. You melt it, right? melt it and it creates a hardened coating hardened why can i not say that word a hard coating there we go we're just going to eliminate that word altogether creates a hard coating on top of whatever you put it on whether it's cupcakes or brownies or whatever the case may be and with fudgy brownies how delicious would that be so then i was thinking well you mentioned peanut butter swirls. You mentioned caramel swirls. We've already made like the pre-baked just to make sure my recipe was on point and I wasn't putting too much protein or too much greens in there because um, if I tell you guys to put four servings of greens into your brownies and then you make it and it tastes like crap, do you really think you're gonna listen to me again? I wouldn't. So like I said earlier, things I haven't made in a while, I remake. So then I was thinking while things were cooking that, you know, we should make the peanut butter ganache coating. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to let the chocolate melt and put a little bit of peanut butter in here, a little bit of my oat milk over here, and we're going to make a plant-based ganache for our brownies. Now, when I make an ash, I don't actually measure anything and that's just me, but what I will put up in the description is actual measurements. So what you're looking at is for every, I believe it's a quarter cup or half cup of chocolate chips, you're looking at maybe two to four tablespoons of milk. Now, because we're putting peanut butter in there, it's gonna be a little bit different, um, especially because I'm using the Jeff Natural, so there's some moisture in here already. So we'll, we'll see how this goes because we do need to melt both the chocolate and the peanut butter. 
And if you could see, there's actually not even a quarter cup of chocolate in there. So we are going to put a little bit more chocolate in it. Oh, and the chocolate aroma with the peanut butter aroma. Oh yes, good idea, you guys. Good idea, so good. All right, don't you wish you looked closer? I wish you looked closer. Because then I wouldn't have to eat this all by myself with my wonderful husband. Because, like, I mean, I'm not complaining. It's delicious. But, you know, it does kind of make you feel like, oh my god, I am. I am just indulging too much. When in reality, you're not. Because if you think about it, you have your peanut butter, you have your chocolate. And because these are. These are plant-based chocolate chips, okay? The whole dairy allergy, you guys. Plant-based chocolate chips. And sometimes it needs a little moisture anyway. So it's starting to melt. Right? So, and you know, plant-based chocolate chips get a little dense and they don't like to, to melt very easily. Peanut butter's helping. So let's put a little milk in there. There we go. And you really shouldn't need very much milk. That's the thing is, you know, you just need a little bit of moisture just to help. No, coat, all that good stuff. I'm so getting used to these gas tops too. I love cooking on a gas stove, love it. It has been so long since I've cooked on a gas stove that I'm finding everything cooks quicker. So I have to really pay attention. Oh, almost here, hold on, see? Look at that, check that out. Mm. All right, so I think a little bit more moisture, moisture and we'll have it, you guys. Yep, just a little bit more. See how dense that is? And I'll look, like I said, I'll look up exact measurements so that when you go to make this yourself, first of all, watch the steam. When you go to make this yourself at home, you'll know exact measurements because I know there are those of you out there that need exact recipes and we all cook differently. We do. And it's, it, it's perfectly fine. You cook the way that you feel most comfortable because if you try to work and cook exactly like I do sometimes that's just not it's not the way you naturally cook and that's okay Ooh, oh this looks good look at that a couple minutes and we have delicious chocolate peanut butter Gosh, you guys. I'm gonna scrape this so we can get down into done. We are done. All right. Whoosh. So much hard work, isn't it? And look at that. Perfect timing. The boys are up. Our chocolate ganache is done. Oof. All right. I'm going to put this on here because you know what happens, or some of you may not know. If you don't know what happens to ganache when you leave it sitting um, effectively, it hardens in your bowl. All right, so we need half on this. Oh, God, look at that, you guys. Look at that. And my wonderful husband's going to bite into this and think all he's going to get is chocolate, and he's getting peanut butter. So now, we had discussed adding protein to your delicious goodness here. Just another way of adding protein here. You just added extra protein, fat, as well as carbohydrates, nuts and seeds. They're the most amazing plant-based foods. Now, keep in mind, those of you that listened to my Q&A last week, keep in mind that you never want to overdo the nuts and seeds or the nuts seeds you could you could pretty much live on seeds i don't recommend it because you know they're really tiny you'd have to eat a lot of them 
but they are delicious. They are very nutritious. They have a lot of protein value inside of them and can create complete proteins, which, you know, when you're eating plant-based, creating those complete proteins is pretty serious business. So what we have within this is a complete protein with a lot of dessert and you can make it this way. You can add some extra protein if you'd like, add some nuts and seeds inside so you get some crunchiness, make it a little mm, chocolate protein bar. You've had those, right? I have the Orgain, I think it's Orgain, yeah, Orgain in uh, my pantry right now. And the nutritional values on that are very similar to this. However, <laughs> this tastes better. Mm. All right, I'm gonna go finish licking my spoon because this was the best part of making things as a kid, was licking the spoon. Here's the final tastiness, ready to be eaten. Just waiting for that fork and knife to dig in. If you like what you saw, subscribe, hit that notification bell so that you can be notified as soon as we pop up another recipe. One every week. It's what we call Tasty Tuesdays. So thanks for watching this week's Tasty Tuesday and I hope you enjoyed the recipe and have fun making it. Let me know if you have suggestions, tips, tricks, or if you've made this in a different way that has turned out just as tasty as my recipe. Chat with y'all later.